In today's video, I'm going to explain how to make an animation in Procreate Dreams like the forest scene animation from the last video. So to begin, we have to make the art for the scene. You can do this in Procreate Dreams, but I prefer to do it in Procreate. I'll paint the scene on multiple layers, which will become tracks in Dreams, with each layer being a different depth in the scene. This goes all the way from foreground to background, and I'll usually split objects up as well, depending on how far forwards and backwards they reach in the scene. I'm not making an overly detailed painting for this example, but I am detailing the focal points, as those will be things that I zoom in on in this painting. Once my painting is finished, I'll drag and drop it directly from Procreate into a track in Dreams. Once it's imported, I change its length to about 10 seconds. I don't want this to be a long animation. Then I convert the layers to tracks, by holding down on the imported artwork and selecting that option. With that, we are ready to animate it. I'm going to animate a zoom effect using the keyframing system. But before I begin, I want to explain the zoom effect. When you zoom in with a camera, everything in its view will get bigger. It's pretty self-explanatory. But this doesn't convey depth. To make it a bit more interesting and to add this depth, we can move the camera forward in the scene. I like to visualize this as a three-dimensional thing in my head when I'm animating a 2D scene, but it's kind of hard to explain that. So I've made a graphic that might help. In this graphic, the blue lines represent the stage or the camera, and the red lines represent the scene or the layers. So in the dream stage view, you can see what the scene would look like in dreams, zoomed out on the left and zoomed in on the right. In the top-down view, you can see the layers, not in relation to where they would actually be in the scene if it was three-dimensional, but separated slightly from the stack of tracks. You can see their scale from this top-down view and how much that will change depending on whether we're zoomed out or zoomed in. In the imagination view, you can see what I see in my head from above. I'm looking down on the scene, the blue camera there is in its zoomed out position with its field of view represented by those two lines. And on the zoomed in view, you can see it moved forward in the scene and its field of view has been narrowed. That's what I see in my head when I'm animating this, but it might not be entirely clear to you exactly what I've just explained with this graphic. If it has helped though, great. If not, you'll probably figure it out as I'm doing it. So let's get on to that. To start, I'll keyframe movement for the entire scene because we won't need to be changing the scale of each individual layer for a basic zoom effect. I'll make sure the playhead is on the group and I'll position it at the end of the animation. By tapping the playhead, I can select move and then move and scale. And this will place a move and scale keyframe for me at the end of the animation. One is automatically created at the beginning, which is fantastic, saves some time for us. So now that I've got my start and end keyframes, I'm going to move the playhead to about a third of the way through the animation, keeping it on the new keyframe layer that we've created. Then I will tap in that position to create a new keyframe. This is our zoomed in keyframe. So what we're going to do with that keyframe selected is we're now going to drag the artwork to scale it on the stage. Once we're happy with how zoomed in that is, we're going to move the playhead to about two thirds of the way through the animation and tap again to make a new keyframe. If you want this to be exact and you don't want to have any other movement happening in this animation, you can simply go into the move and scale keyframe you've created and copy over all of the data. Unfortunately, you have to do this manually, but you can copy all the data over from one keyframe to the other. There's sadly no copy and paste for keyframes yet. I'm also changing the position very slightly of where my overall scene is positioned so that I can have a petal fall from the flower and follow it very slightly with the camera across the scene. And that is some super basic camera zooming and camera movement. Now it's time for the more interesting dolly zoom effect. This can be more complex and challenging to achieve if you have more layers in your painting. So what I'm going to do now is go through each track within that group of the entire scene and keyframe the scale of each one individually. I'm going to start with the layer that contains the focal point of the animation, which in this case is the flower. And I'm doing this because this layer will not need any keyframes. This is because all the zoom for this layer has been done with the group. So I'm going to start going up 
the layers. So I'm moving into the foreground, and each time I go up a layer, I'm going to increase the scale ever so slightly more for each one. I'm placing keyframes in exactly the same positions as I did for the group, or as close as I possibly can. And depending on where the anchor point of each layer is, I'm positioning them slightly as well. I'm far more precise in changing the scale in this stage, and I'll actually use the interface rather than manually scaling it. This is so I can ensure that the scale is changing ever so slightly between each track, and not changing to the same or more than the layer above it. An easier way to create the second zoom keyframe for the tracks is actually to just go slightly further along in the timeline from the first one you've made and make a new one. The zoom from the existing one will already have been applied to this. It will have slightly less zoom because we're creating a keyframe between two existing keyframes the animation is currently easing between. I find that this can actually make things look a little more natural than the second keyframe having exactly the same zoom as the first one. As I go through each track, I'm also keyframing Gaussian Blur. Now this is what will create the camera focus effect, or depth of field. So as I'm focusing on the focal point, for the keyframe where we've zoomed in the most, the focal point layer will have no Gaussian Blur. Tracks that are above it will have slight Gaussian Blur and more Gaussian Blur the further into the foreground they are. So our track that's most in the foreground, the one at the top, will have a lot of Gaussian Blur whereas the track that is only one above our focal point layer will have very little Gaussian Blur, if any. And the reverse for going backwards into the scene or, or tracks below the focal point track. So as I'm going down from the focal point track, I'm slowly decreasing their scale rather than increasing. I'm very careful to make sure that the scale of these tracks doesn't ever become smaller than the scale that the artwork originally was in the zoomed out view. If I do this, it will create a more unsettling dolly zoom effect. I don't want that for this scene. Once all layers are correctly keyframed, it's time to add a frame by frame animated element to this animation. In my last animation, I made a bee fly through the scene. In this one, I'm going to have a petal fall from the flower and come slightly into the foreground. I'm going to combine frame by frame animation with performance mode animated movement to achieve a nice flowy motion. Firstly, I'll create an empty track in the group in about the place depth-wise that I want the petal to be. So in this case, it'll be the track above the focal point track. Then I'll enter drawing mode by tapping the drawing mode button, and I'll swipe the whole timeline down to enter the flipbook mode. This allows you to create a frame-by-frame -frame animation. Now I can paint my petals animation. I'm not going for anything fancy, just a simple swaying motion backwards and forwards. I'll make certain frames last longer by duplicating them in the flipbook. There's currently no way to have one frame last for multiple frames, we just have to duplicate them at the moment. Once I'm happy with this, I'll group all of the frames on the timeline view and duplicate these grouped frames to make it loop. I'll do this for however long I want the animation to be on the screen. Then I'm going to use performance mode to keyframe the motion for the petal. I enable performance mode, move my playhead to the beginning of when the petal will fall in the animation, and move it around the scene with my pencil as the animation plays. I do the same with the scale, but unlike the B in the last one, I'm not going to have the petal go off the screen and come back on much larger. For the B I actually had two different tracks of two separately drawn Bs. One was small, one was large, and I did this because if I increased the scale of a small B, its quality would decrease and it would look much worse than drawing an entirely new bee at a larger scale. I also had the small bee appear in the background and the large bee appear in the foreground, so I needed them on two separate tracks, so they would appear behind and in front of certain objects, respectively. Anyway, the reason I'm not doing that with the petal is because there aren't as many objects in front of the flower in this scene, and I'm not intending to have the petal come that far forward in the scene either. So the one petal will do. At this point, the animation is basically complete, you can add some sound or music if you want to, but I'm not going to cover that in this video. You can keyframe volume with imported sound and music. I actually didn't do this for the previous animation. I added the sound using a video editing software so that I could have a buzzing sound for the B move from the left headphone to the right headphone as it moves through the scene. And you can't currently do panning effects within Dreams, just volume.
Anyway, with that, the animation is complete! That is how I did it. Except this time I've done it in portrait, so that I can potentially make this a YouTube short. Stay tuned for that. Maybe coming possibly soon, eventually. Who knows? <laughs> I hope this has been helpful for you, and thanks for watching. If you have any requests for future videos, please feel free to leave a comment. I actually made this video because people asked for a tutorial on how I did the last one. And I thought, why not? Thank you for watching. I'll see you next time. Have a good one.